so this video is all about kind of some lessons learned from uh, working, uh, rebuilding a pump. Um, had one issue we'll cover, but there's a, a bunch of components to redo, rebuild. Um, but, and I'll go over those, but I'll kind of describe what uh, our what our problems were. And overall, if you are doing this, I think you just rebuild this or buy a new one of these. Um, they are drier. I think you just rebuild it. It's probably just as, just as easy. And just clean up the motor. I think you'll be fine and uh, move on down the road. You'll have a working pump and a lot easier than trying to rebuild everything. Okay, so the first tip I'm going to say is removing this. Um, you can have two airlines here. I believe it's a lot easier to remove the rear tire, the uh, left rear tire. Uh, there's even some videos on YouTube that um, where they've cut these and then just done a repair on the lines because they're so hard to get out. But um, if you remove the tire, it's a lot easier to get your hand in there to uh, get a lot more force to pull them out. So. It's not that hard to uh, put it on jacks. Um, and I would actually uh, uh, release all the air so it's easier to jack up. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about how to remove the compressor. So after you remove the lower um, cover, it's gonna have three bolts. So the t bottom two are easy. They're two, 10 millimeter bolts, 10 millimeter heads. Bottom two are easy. The top one is very difficult to access. And what I found is the easiest way, and yes, I did use a ratchet, small ratcheting wrench and snuck it up from the bottom. Uh, it's difficult. So the easiest way I found was this setup. A short 10, a swivel socket, a short extension, and your ratcheting. This one, if you use a long one, will be too long. This type of swivel, I think are just harder to use because they get they swivel too much. I think this one's a lot easier to use. And this is your where you're going to be. You're gonna have to be on the side here, and you're only gonna get about that much action. Okay? And you're going to be looking up from this angle, from the front. The reason you can't go this farther is because the body's in the way. So you have to kind of sneak it up here to get access to it. And then you're not going to be able to get, get that much ratcheting action. But you get enough to be able to loosen and tighten that bolt. That is the easiest way to do it. Um, again, you can't come out this far because there's just no access, because the body is gonna hit right there. So you have to sneak it up, so you just have just enough access. Um, and the swivel is really what you need. Um, but that's that's the easiest way. I've done it with the ratcheting wrench, and uh, it's just, that's the way it is. Um, so once you get out the compressor, you're gonna have three connecting points. There's one on the bottom. There's some YouTube videos where people actually unloosen these to get the compressor out. I find that more actually more difficult because you're getting this one and this one's pretty difficult to access. It's actually just easier just to remove the bolt. Okay, so now let's talk about the air compressor. This is the Hitachi. Um, there's five components for the rebuild. And let's talk about each one of them and whether which one's necessary, which one does the most, which one's the easiest. So first of all, you have the motor, which is very easy to, uh, to service. You essentially have four Torx, 25 Torx. Unscrew it and uh, basically just spray a bunch of electrical cleaner and clean out all the uh, dust and dirt. That's all there is to it. It's very easy. The second is the air dryer. Um, this is probably the 90-10 rule. 90% of 
uh, rebuilding it and what's going to work, uh, making your compressor work again, is right here. This is a very simple job, very easy. Once you got the compressor off, this is this is a simple job. Um, the second or the third part is the delivery valve. Um, it's just unscrewing this and putting in a new valve and spring and an O-ring. The fourth component is the exhaust valve uh, with all the O-rings for the solenoid, the exhaust valve solenoids right here. And the last is the piston and the bore. And you can replace the piston and the bore. So we're... I had issues is we unscrewed this and it was going very, 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 very tight. It was very hard to get off. And when we got it off, the threads were all messed up. Um, so we basically had to make a Frankenstein. We had to take this, the cylinder top off of another pump and use it on the, on the motor and using the piston from the other one. Um, and it worked. Um, you know, I don't know what really what to say about that. Um, it's not totally the rebuild if you don't do it, but um, I think I would just leave it for if uh, if you're doing this for the first time. Now the exhaust valve solenoid, if you watch the movies on YouTube with 4x4 air seals, he'll even says as in the instructions, hey, leave this alone if it's not scored up. Uh, this is, I think this one's the hardest thing to service. It's got a tricky O-ring that if it gets out of place, it's hard to uh, put back in because it grows. So the last component is the piston and a new bore. Um, we went ahead and did this because we were ordering the kit, so figured might as well do everything. This is a picture of the used bore and the piston. Actually, you know, so that little part's off, but... I, I gotta say, I think that was maybe a mistake. Um, I think maybe we didn't really need to replace it. I mean, no, no harm done, but I don't think we needed to replace it. We could have done without replacing that. So my suggestion, anyone doing this, is to do just the air dryer and clean the motor. Cleaning the motor is very, very easy. Again, it's just taking off the screws, cleaning out this case, spraying some electrical cleaner all over it, letting it dry and putting it back together. Uh, putting the new, putting an air dryer, taking the air dryer off, cleaning out all the uh, condescent, putting in new in uh, the filters. It's a very easy job. If you want, you can replace um, the top you know, the tops apparently have a bad history of cracking right in the middle. This one didn't have a crack. We replaced it anyway. Um, just because when we were ordering the kit, you might as well. And, uh, but if I was doing it again, I'd probably just, I should probably uh, not do it and replace the filter. So again, I've said it a few times, but if I could do this all over again, I would just rebuild the filter and clean the motor, leave everything else behind. I think uh, I think you'll get uh, a working uh, a working uh, pump and uh, going down the road. It's a lot easier. So a little bonus feature here: if you do replace the uh, shim, I mean the uh, bore and the piston and you uh, forgot how the shim went in, this is it. This is the uh, orientation of the shim. So you see how that little uh, whole round circle is in the shim and it uh, it's where the little, little holes are in the uh, cylinder head. That is the uh, orientation. So if you dropped it or forgot the orientation when you're putting it back together, there it is.